We're going to move right into the budget committee without any break. Hopefully we'll get through this process fairly quickly. Uh, I want to convene the budget committee. Mike, would you please take a roll? I'll do that. Um, Commissioner Blomberg. Here. Uh, Mr. Gasper is not yet here. Ms. Duncan? Here. Mr. Edwards? Ms. McDevitt? Here. Mr. Mosley? Here. Ms. Pappas? Mr. Temple? Here. Dr. Zachariah? Yes. Mm, uh, Mr. Chair, you have a quorum. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, it was close. Okay. Um, <laughs> yes, I, I'm not sure Madam Chair would have worked. You're receiving, uh, being passed out right now, are the new slides in connection with the various budget items that we talked about last month, which have been dealt with this month to modify the budget. Before we get into that process, let me draw your attention to the minutes of the meeting held August 9th, 2007. Uh, is there a motion to amend, modify, or approve these minutes? Any change to the minutes? Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. And it passes. One to nothing. Um, <laughs> thank you for that vote, Madam Chair. I'm paying attention, sir. Okay. Mr. Chairman. <laughs> uh, what I'd like to do now is ask Tim Jones to come up and give us a follow-up. As you recall, this budget committee did most of the heavy lifting last month. We dealt with the LBR request, subject to a few items that needed to be dealt with by other committees. Those committees have met uh, yesterday and this morning. I guess this morning we didn't deal with anything, but certainly yesterday. Dealt with some of these issues and dispatched them. Uh, what we'd like to do now is take a look at those, make our final LBR tweaks since we actually did approve the LBR last month and then move forward with the university system operating budgets. Let me ask Tim to step up. Tim, thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, one of the items that you sent back last month was the graduate, teach, uh, graduate teaching student support issue. Um, that went before the student affairs committee yesterday. They favorably moved that issue for $16.8 million and that uh, those funds would go to support graduate teaching assistance, um, health insurance, and you notice that the original proposal was $15.5 million, so it is a little bit more than what we saw back in August, um, and it's based on revised numbers that we had and that we did not have the previous month. I don't know if did you want to take these up separately in terms of approval or actually you know if it's all right with the committee I'd like to just hear all of these uh, we can deal with them in one motion if appropriate and be done with the OPR and move on to the budgets okay so you've got the we had pulled the graduate teaching student assistance last month sent it back to student affairs uh, Governor McDivitt's committee dealt with it yesterday and the recommendation was 16.8 million into our budget that's correct okay next Next um, in the afternoon committee was a research and economic development issue dealing with five different programs. First was the Florida Center for Library Automation, which was before this committee at 5.9 million. Second was the University Press of Florida at 1 million. The Florida Initiative on Global Education at 1.3 million, and I believe the recommendation was or the consensus of the uh, provost that this would not be sufficient to do fully do this initiative and this should really be looked at as a pilot project for distance learning the original proposal was for three million dollars the recommendation is for seven hundred fifty thousand dollars to continue implementation of the orange grove initiative so a, a difference of about two point to five million and then finally the uh, Florida Institute of Oceanography was a recommendation last month of 1.5 million and the committee did not recommend going forward with those funding requests at this time but to look at a, a statewide analysis of the current fleet and vessel situation see what is available out there so okay. that's the completion of those issues coming out of that committee there were those issues that came out. These were the possible changes to the budget that we talked about from the one that we approved last month. Are there any questions or changes or suggestions with regards to this group of items? 
All right, seeing none, is there a motion to add these, this group into the LBR that's already been approved as per last month's meeting? So moved. I'll take the second. Thank you. Any additional discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. And opposed. Aye. The motion carries. Can we do the next group, Tim? Okay, there were two other issues that came up at the last uh, meeting. One dealt with the University of Central Florida contractual obligation with the Burnham Institute. They've identified uh, $1.25 million need to maintain and honor that agreement that they have with Burnham and the expectations of the state. Okay, we had, we had talked about, if you recall, there was a portion of the budget that we had, since we modified the way we're doing things, we put out requests to universities to see if there were additional items that should have been included. UCF at that meeting had responded with Burnham and FAMU had responded with their federal land grant matching dollars. No other university responded in the last 30 days. So these will be the two items that we consider adding. One is the UCF 1.25 and the second is the FAMU piece. Do you want yes, to just run through that? Yes, the FAMU land grant matching issue. That is a federal program that they've been involved with in, for a number of years. Um, it's a 100% match. Currently, the state has provided about $900,000, and FAMU has provided about $1.8 million in in-kind support. That leaves them a little bit short of about $500,000 to have the funds to get to the level of federal match that they expect. Um, there's also apparently some discussions between FAMU and the feds on whether or not they'll be able to continue that in-kind support, but at this time I don't believe they have any um, anything official from the feds that they would not accept that. Great. So is there a motion then to add to the LDR those two items that we discussed last month and have reviewed, which would be the $1.25 million for the UCF Burnham commitment, the economic development commitment, and half a million dollars uh, to the FAMU uh, federal land grant matching? So moved. Motion is there a second? And a second. Any discussion? Can I just make one yes. quick comment? Please, Governor Duncan. I'm particularly on the Burnham piece of it. I just see some of our new guests in the back of the room, and yeah, you know, the continued support and commitment from their entire region to this effort does mean a lot in continuing to support this effort. It's been such a great community thing that I think it's important, and I just wanted to recognize their presence here as we're having this vote. Their timing was good. Thank you, Governor Duncan. When we discuss with the motion, I'll introduce some of the folks in the back. Uh, is there any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor then, please say aye. 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 And opposed. Motion carries. Let me just take a, a point of privilege and introduce the Orange County Mayor, Rich Crotty, who has just joined us, and the Mayor of the City of Orlando, Buddy Dyer, who has just joined us as well. Thank you, both. Moving on then, the next slide should show you the net changes that we have just made, the additions to the LBR. There is a .7 or $700,000 balance, which we will, with a proper motion, move into the student success portion of the budget, grossing that number up so that our budget stays absolutely the same as we approved it last month. Are there any questions with regard to the summary behind me, the net changes? Seeing none, is there a motion to approve the final 700000 going back into student success? So motion and a second. Any discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. And opposed. Motion carries two to nothing. Thank you both for voting. <laughs> uh, paying attention. Thank you, Madam Chair. <laughs> One of the other issues that was discussed for revisiting was on the UCF, the FIU incremental funding increase that was approved last month. We had given direction to the chancellor and the deans to pull together a, a meeting of the deans of the med schools and see if there were some synergies that could be found with regard particularly to the increased costs on the LCME accreditation. I appreciate that the deans met during that period of time. Um, Dr. Lamont, is there, can you give us a summary of the meeting that occurred? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, are you looking just for a summary on the, uh, the Dean's meeting, or did you also want uh, anything on the, the two institutions' incremental funding as well? Well, 
What I'd like to hear, particularly because we approved the incremental funding at the last board meeting, subject to any changes that might come from any synergies that could be found from the various the meeting with the deans. And then I understand you also went and verified that, in fact, there were LCME changes and that it was requiring additional funding. So yes, what, I, right. what I'd be interested in more than anything is were there any synergies found, any cost savings that could be generated, and the commitment that I know that the deans have made to work together on a go-forward basis as their medical schools progress so that we'll have a medical education system. Yes, well, we did have a very proactive meeting with the deans, and I think it was, it was very uh, uh, significant in, in their getting together for at least an initial meeting and exploring some synergies. And I do believe that there are some synergies that will be found, but I suspect that they will take some time to find. We, we, we found five categories of uh, library collaboration, per general purchasing, uh, the uh, curricular inventorying across the system, also the training of actor patients, and then um, the, the notion of collaborating for national searches across the the, uh, the medical school system, and we believe that there are some prospective synergies to be found. We charged each medical school with taking the leadership in one of those five areas, and we expect that the deans and the presidents will be meeting again and working on these in the longer term. In the shorter term, I don't believe that we would see a, a sufficient turnaround that would have an immediate impact on the two new medical school uh, requests for incremental funding increases. Great. Thank you, Dr. Lamont. Any questions for Dr. Lamont? Okay, seeing none, that will require no changes to the budget approved last month. That was more of an update if there were some changes. Tim, can we move into the operating budget then? I'm sorry, did you have a question, Mr. Tim? Yeah, no. You know, I know you're saying we approved the, the, uh, the budget last month. Yes. We did it, but we raised a lot of questions. And, no doubt. And one of the questions he's just answered, which was getting the medical school things together. Um, doesn't sound to me like it was very productive, but that's my opinion. Um, I still have questions about the two new medical schools the expanded budgets, and I don't know whether you're going to do that now or, or next. Actually, we did that last month, Governor. Well, we, we, we can do we, it. We can no, we can visit on it again now uh, if you'd like. But I would like to visit again. Because okay. I still I raised a bunch of questions at the meeting, and I raised questions after the meeting, and I think. We were all in sticker shock last meeting, um, so I'd like to ask some more questions. You are certainly welcome to do that. Let me just remind us, we went through, I, I think we were all in sticker shock, and one of the questions was, how can this be? What are the changes? I, I don't want to get technical. I mean, okay. in, my, in my vote, I voted for it subject to all these questions we raised. Right. And I'm, I'm still not satisfied, and I still got more questions. So let's not, I don't want to get in that argument about whether we approve it. Right. it. It is up to you, Governor. We can we can address your questions now. Um, okay. I, I think there's folks right. that can sure. <laughs> I think there's folks that can answer those questions. But I, I just do want to be clear where we are in processes that we approve the budget subject to that Dean's committee meeting and I know you requested additional information that we've all been given with regard to where the additional month funds are going to go, where the LCME accreditation challenges have raised the cost and raised the bar, and I think the universities have provided that to us. So if you've got any specific questions, please feel free. Okay. Uh, University of Central Florida yesterday uh, finally gave me, um, contrary to what I've been told by others, gave me their uh, new guidelines. And so it's, it's a lot clearer to me than it was at the last meeting that clearly, clearly these guidelines, even though I can't take the guidelines and go from guideline to dollar to guideline to dollar. To dollar. I mean, and that's not our job. Sure. That's the job of the universities and the job of the staff. Uh, so it's clear to me that I, I understand a lot better why we've had to accelerate these dollars. Uh, question. Uh, there's there's, there, you know, there's, there's, there's two changes or there's two guidelines, and one of them goes back to May of 2006, uh, and then one is recent, uh, which is June of this year. 
So one question is, does the new budget contain both of these? Yeah. It is including the most current one. You know, costs associated with the most current. You no, know, and I had the, I had the same conversation and with both universities. And my understanding is that both universities have incorporated both the May and the June changes in this new budget request. And which one had the most uh, financial impact? You know, cost increases. Was it a year ago, over a year ago, or was it this latest one? Or is it? Is there any kind? I mean, generally, how's that split? Um, I'll have to call on our provost and medical dean to give you that precise. <coughs> I don't know if it's precise. I just want a general feeling of that. I mean, was half of it a year ago, or was most of it a year ago? Well, some just as a, a reminder, the vote on the approval of the two medical schools <coughs> March 23rd, 2006. So it's you're looking back. Yeah, almost that, that was months. May. This came out. The first one came out in May. Right. Yes, sir. But the vote that all the estimates that we gave you on cost were done before that came out. And we have hired a dean, both of us, we have worked through all of this, and these changes you're referring to all occurred subsequent to our estimate of cost. And we're understanding them better as we go. But we can tell you, uh, others can tell you exactly uh, which uh, which changes led to what cost increase. I really am not the person to do that. I just want a general feel. Was most of the cost increase Where is our related problem? to the first? He's right behind you, first President. Question. I mean, I don't I don't need it precise. I just want to know. I mean, is this two thirds of it, and this one third, or is it ninety ten, or fifty fifty, or what? The majority of the impact is. Uh, the most recent change, the one introduced in or in June, uh, in June and became effective July 1. Okay. Governor Zakra? Okay. You know, the last meeting... Uh, yeah, yeah, John, I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Governor. I thought you were... No, no, no if I could finish. Please. Uh, the other thing is, is you know, I, I better understand why we've had to accelerate We've had the front end out. I mean, that, that's pretty clear in here, just as a layman, if you will. What I don't understand is when we kind of get the stabilization five or six years from now, uh, in the case, I think, of University of Central Florida, it's like a 25% increase, and instead of being $20 million of net needs, you've got $25 million of net needs, which is a huge increase. And I think in the case of FIU, it's more like 30%. Uh, how <laughs> I understand the acceleration of the dollars with this, but but the the overall basis had to increase when you stabilize. And what's the you know what's what's that mostly go to? Is it just more staffing for new schools or or I, I just want to mostly more faculty. Uh, I think 90, more faculty, probably 90, more yeah. total faculty. Members. The the shift from having uh, larger lecture sections. The smaller group sections cost more money, and that I, I think we would all agree that that's likely to produce better physician education, but it is expensive. Well, if the LCMA is trying to encourage new medical schools, <laughs> making it hard. Way, the way to win friends and influence people. They're making it hard. Uh, they're making it really hard. Well, uh, you know, you're making the assumption that they're trying to encourage. <laughs> yeah, I am. And maybe that's not true. <laughs> if that's not true, yeah. that's fine. Uh, the last thing uh, is in going through this process, um, and I'm not sure, I think we should all be aware of this. I wasn't aware of this. But in our discussion about the two new medical schools, we also talked about expanding the existing medical schools. Uh, and, uh, you know, I was at that meeting. <laughs> And I, I just want to make sure everybody understands that even though we haven't approved any of this, uh, there's about $200 million in new capital ships associated with the new medical schools. That's over a 10-year period, Governor? It, well, it's over, yeah. Uh, but it's most of it, yeah, it's over, well, it's over, yeah. Not quite that. Is that the, the new medical school but capital you're talking about? Medical school capital. Okay. So and there's no I doubt. I don't know how many of us missed this, but I did. And I think 
I would suggest that you recirculate this just so everybody knows. We can we certainly yeah, will do that. It was in a previous agenda, but like yes. so much of our information, sometimes it gets overlooked. It's in there. Thank you, Governor. Governor Zachariah. Mr. Chairman, uh, you know, I have a great deal of concern about this increase in the cost. After the last board meeting, I looked at the website of this LCMA. And I also spoke to the staff at the University of Florida and South Florida. It is my understanding that the same criteria that the new schools have to have, the other schools have also met those criteria. It Talking about this small uh, class size, they still have, the University of Florida and South Florida has a small class size. What is appalling to me is that when these two universities came before this, see, these, this is an institution of higher education. Either they knew or should have known there were some, my, there were some uh, other requirements. And they come before the board with a budget. And along with that saying there are a lot of people waiting to check with them. They're just waiting around, just walking around these universities with checkbooks to write checks. Where are those checks? And, this, uh, and the, uh, the, 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 the other question that I have to, and that I talked to both the universities, I want to know the exact increase in cost. Come on, me, what I see is a lot of smoking mirrors, but I want to know the exact increase in cost compared to University of Florida and South Florida versus the two medical schools. And I, I, there is no way I'm going to support this budget unless and unless I have the deans of other uh, medical schools come and give me a comprehensive report as to the actual cost. I am not going to sit here and uh, support a budget that is manufactured on thin air. It's not going to happen. I know something about medical education. I, I was opposed to this thing from day one because I knew Somewhere along the line, they'll come up and say, now he's pregnant, now give me more money. Another thing too, I support this, uh, this venture with the caveat that the problem in Florida is not medical schools. The problem in Florida is residency programs. I know the University of Central Florida has done a great job in getting more residency programs. We must, this board, this body should insist on increasing the residency program if you have any obligation to the public. If you're going to write a check for the public's money, just to have two monumental medical schools and have the residents uh, and have the doctors go practice in some part of the, some other parts of the United States, <coughs> so be it. Yeah. If our moral obligation, the legal obligation, is support an institution that keeps more doctors in Florida, the only way you're going to do that is by increasing the residency program. So far, I, all I've heard is a bunch of lip service, especially from Miami. I want to see more residency programs in Florida, without which there is no way I can support this project. Governor, just a couple of observations, and if others want to answer, please feel free. First, we recognize, and I had the same questions you did, particularly with regard to existing <laughs> med schools and the varying changes in accreditation. Several issues there. First of all, these two universities are going for new accreditation. They don't have existing facilities, faculty, or staff. So they don't get the benefit of the synergies that are existing in the current universities who can absorb that process. Those universities also get a few years before the reaccreditation occurs and can plan and absorb that with their current plant capital and faculty needs. This is a new startup for these universities. They're having to front load a lot of faculty and staff. I've taken a very close look at the numbers from both universities, and if they have not provided it to you, it will specifically make clear to you how the front loading has cost more money and how it is really creating these stark numbers that we saw last month when we went through this process. With regard to residencies, there is no doubt. We were all into that conversation. We looked at this issue for two years, and those are driving factors here. I know UCF has succeeded very well in their residencies, and I understand that FIU is working hard to do that as well. I'm not sure the status of those. And I think what you are bringing out, and frankly what Governor Temple is bringing out, calls for us to get an update report from the universities at a point in time in the next meeting or two to see where are we on these issues because yet residencies were key. Residencies and economic development were the two issues that were imperative to this board when we reviewed this process and I think it would be important for us to get an update at some point in time as to where they are on these processes. But if the universities haven't specifically told you where each dollar is going to go on a go forward basis, I know that material exists and they'll provide it to you. You know, Governor, the problem that I have when the leaders of higher education in Florida who come before this board, these are very educated men and women, who come before the board for a specific cause after having an array of consultants from the LCME, 
these consultants should have, they knew or should have known that there was a front load uh, of cost. If that be the case, why didn't they come before the Board of Governors and tell us that? Governor, now, I, there I, is absolutely no defense and there is no excuse for that conduct. You cannot sit here and defend that. These are men and women of higher education. These are not guys from the streets asking for a 7-Eleven. These are highly educated men and women asking for a miracle school that's going to cost the taxpayers hundreds of millions of dollars. They know or should have, they have the consultants. There's not a bunch of guys they picked up from the high school. They had top-notch, high-paid consultants they knew or should have known. In my opinion, all they're trying to do was a snow job, and they can take it any way they want to take it. Well, I, I, That's what it I, is. I suspect that they will, Governor, but I... And again, another thing I want to do, when it comes before the board for any further action, I would like to have the two uh, schools dealt with separately, not as a combined institute, because they're, in my opinion, reading the numbers, looking at the... They're two different entities. We should not, and I, I said from the very beginning when we came before the board, and I, I asked the board to do them separately and not as, a, as two, uh, you know, to have two universities, their, their, their applications are being dealt with at the same time. I, I would hope that we would look at them separately. We can do that in the future. If I could just yeah. comment. I, I think if you remember in the last meeting, we lumped all of the universities together, not just two universities. And we're also talking about substantial increases in funding to the other universities. So if two of them are going to come forward, I'd like to see all of them come forward and explain why they're getting okay. their money. And, and we will do that in future meetings when and as that occurs. Um, any other questions? Including the capital class. Including, uh, certainly. Governor, we, uh, and we'll look at every med school separately at each and every capital decision if you'd like. Right. I think that may well be our obligation. Governor Pappas. Uh, Mr. Chairman, you alluded to this, but I specifically recall that the resolution we passed when we voted on the medical schools had a very significant accountability reporting mechanism. It did. And, and I think a lot of the issues around this discussion would be well served in that reporting function and we should be vigilant in making sure that gets done. I mean that was in my mind that was an integral part of why I voted in favor of it and so I hope that that is on the radar screen of all the, the institutions that benefited from those approvals and that we see it through as we should. Governor, what I would like to do, it's not within our purview as the budget committee to make that request, but I would ask Madam Chair if she would schedule a university med school update for us and let us know where they are on fundraising, on status of accreditation, on status of hiring of faculty, and on curriculum development in the next several months. If she can get that, if she can make that request, I would certainly, as a committee, make that request. Yes, I agree to do that. I'll, I'll announce it at a later time. Thank you, Madam Chair. Anything else on this topic? Dr. Hitt? If I may, Mr. Chair. Um, I guess one grows accustomed in this uh, argument to having one's integrity uh, question. Uh, I don't say that I like it, but I'm getting accustomed to it. Um, Governor Temple asked for some information yesterday. I think within an hour or so of your request, you had it. Uh, Dr. Zachariah, I certainly respect your opinions on this. I am not aware that you have yet requested the information. If you would like it, we will certainly provide it to you. It will establish that we are dealing with new requirements. Now, perhaps someone should have been able to see into the future and know that those were coming, but we didn't, and our consultants didn't. Uh, they are indeed new since we made our estimates of cost uh, and your vote on March 23, 2006, by a vote of 15 to 1, if I recall, to establish two medical schools. Um, I cannot account for why deans at other schools are denying that there are new requirements, but their denial does not change the fact. There are indeed new requirements. Um, as to the residencies, uh, I believe Lars Hooman, the, the uh, president of Florida Hospital, is with us this morning. Uh, between their fine organization and Orlando Regional Healthcare, we have 95 residencies pledged with no state funding or federal funding. Wonderful. We are told that the new VA hospital, which is co-locating with our medical school in Lake Nona, will add as many as 75 residencies. We took seriously your concern there. I know that Mitch Medeek and his colleagues at FIU have as well. We are responding. 
Uh, if, if there's something you need to know, if you will ask me or members of my staff, we will get you the best information we can. Um, I think we need to, to um, start looking at facts and not just listen to unsupported uh, allegations from various quarters. Uh, we'll give you the facts if you want them. We're happy to. We think they support our case very well. Uh, and I'd like to, to leave this contentious matter behind and get on with building two outstanding medical schools. We've got committed out at Lake Nona almost a billion and, and a half dollars in construction and development on this project. We've got uh, the first building out of the ground. We've hired an outstanding dean and we're hiring good faculty members day by day. This is not a project that you can just turn a tap on and off for. The credibility of this Board of Governors, your good faith uh, and, and integrity in a process here uh, has led people to invest hundreds of millions of dollars already. And I just can hardly imagine that there's any good purpose to be served by further bickering on this. And I'll just be frank with you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hitt. Let's move on into the SUS operating budget, if we might. Tim? Thank you. I'll begin on page 14 of your packet behind the budget committee tab is the annual SUS operating budget. This is a similar format that you've seen in prior years. Um, your master of powers and duties require this board to approve each university board of trustees approved operating budget. Okay, so let me just reiterate what we've got is a compilation of the budgets that have been prepared, prepared by the university boards of trustees with regard to their specific institution, compiled for our purposes, and then for us to give a final approval on. Are there any questions for Tim or any of the universities with regard to anything in that SUS budget question? Seeing none, is there a motion to approve? No, motion, is there a second? Second. Governor Temple moves, Governor Dasburg seconds. Any additional discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. aye. And the motion carries. <clears throat> Tim, let's move into the university regulations. For your information, we have, we are continuing our regulation reviews. We're taking a look at updating the various regulations as we transform into our final operating group. This is our first look at these regulations. There's no action required on these, but rather we'll approve these next month subject to any changes we wish to make now. We've been fully briefed and they're fairly straightforward. Tim, you want to go through them just one at a time? Again, no action required, but if you have questions, we'll deal with the regulations one at a time. Thank you, sir. The, um, all of these regulations that are coming before you, and there are seven of them, are, as Governor Press says, the first step in your two-step process, so we will be back at the next meeting for final approval. All of these regulations have been vetted with university controllers, budget officers, data administrators, and the VPs of admin and finance. And the first one is the operating budget regulation. This is a new regulation that outlines the process for submittal of operating budgets. It's the ones that you just uh, passed. Uh, this is a new regulation. Previously, underneath the Board of Regents, this was an old Chancellor's Memorandum is what it was called. So it, it is not new in terms of university responsibility, but it is new in terms of a regulation. Are there any questions with regard to this new regulation? And again, we will approve this next month. This is just our first reading of these changes. Thanks, Tim. Move on. The uh, next regulation is another new one. It is um, operating budgets for auxiliary facilities with outstanding revenue bonds. In the spring, you approve an operating budget pursuant to this proposed regulation uh, dealing with auxiliary facilities. So this just puts in um, a regulation format that's annual requirement that you have been acting on previously. Once again, this was another old chancellor's memorandum. Um, it is not new to the universities. Uh, but it is being adopted as a regulation. Thank you. Too many questions? Signal, please. Next is the preparation of the annual university financial statements. Uh, that is required by the Department of Financial Services. We are currently working on this, and this just outlines the process that universities will follow in submitting that information to our office for compilation and submission to uh, DFS. Uh, once again, this is uh, this is a new uh, regulation. Questions for Tim? 
Thank you. Uh, next is the preparation of consolidated financial statements. Uh, we are required through the Bond Disclosure Act to compile consolidated uh, statements after the first of each year. And this just outlines the process for universities to follow in getting that information to us. Great. Questions? Thank you. Tim? Uh, next we have uh, three regulations that deal with data and information processes. Uh, Dr. Ramon Padilla, our information director, is here to answer any questions, but I'm going to try to go through these briefly. The first one is an amended regulation that deals with the security of data and information that is submitted to the board office. That which All of this allows us to present these um, many reports that you see, so these are critical. Well, we certainly want to continue the many reports, Tim. Any uh, questions? <laughs> Seeing none, thanks. Um, the second item is an amended regulation dealing with uh, the collection of data pursuant to the various master files and data elements that we have established for a compilation of information from universities. Questions? Seeing none, Tim? And the last is a new regulation that outlines uh, when data should be submitted, the timely processing and submission of that data, and the actions that the chancellor will take in notifying universities if data is not submitted timely. Okay. Questions? Seeing them, what I do need is a motion to move these on to our next reading for next month. This is not approval, but rather just moving them to next month. Is there a motion? So moved. And a second. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 That one gets more votes than anything, the whole committee meeting. Thank you very much. Motion carries. Thank you, Tim. Um, anything else? Uh, just one other thing, and I'll, everyone is interested in budget reductions, um, and I'll just briefly update the committee on where we stand on those. The House Policy and Budget <coughs> Council released their recommendations late yesterday, uh, which is in your packet and on the screen. Um, they are meeting this morning at 9. I'm not sure the outcome of their discussions. But the Senate, um, as of this morning, we had not received their recommendation, as, although it's my understanding they're going to be very similar to what the House is proposing. So um, the process would be for them to uh, pass something out of their committees today. The staff, legislative staff will be working over the weekend to come up with a proposed bill, um, which would be voted on next week and then go to the floor, floors of the House and Senate sometime next week once they get into session. Great. And then they would conference the following weekend. And what you have here is the House recommendations on budget cuts. Thank you, Tim. And those are very positive for higher education. Thank you very much. Anything else before the committee? Great. Let me just say, this budgeting process, as we talked about last month, is the first time we're taking a new approach, the lump sum. It's going to be interesting to see where we go. I'm grateful to Governor Redwood's committee for taking on the performance funding, and we'll revisit that as we go forward. Uh, in the next several meetings, Governor uh, Edwards will deal with that issue as we go about allocating those funds. Um, it's been an interesting process as we go forward, and thanks, everyone, for your participation. And, Tim, thanks for the great staff work we've received. There's nothing else? Oh. I have something. I'm sorry, Governor Parker. No, I apologize, Mr. Chair, for not getting, uh, getting that in. I, I couldn't yeah. see. Okay. okay. Um, you and I had, had, um, I had, uh, had a minute to uh, actually think about the Taxation and Bud Budget Reform Commission. Thank you very much. And I just wanted to, um, I thought since we're talking about our budgeting process, this may be a, a good time to just to talk about a little bit, you know, for the, it looks like almost our entire um, board is here. Um, I ask that, um, I guess, that our universities, that our trustees, and that the members of even uh, our staff um, kind of pay attention to what's happening with the TBRC. I mean, they really um, have the power to make some very important decisions about how we budget and fund higher ed. Well, actually, they're taking up all taxing and budgeting issues um, across the state. So if you have any issue that you're passionate about and it receives some type of funding or budgeting from the state, it is very important that you get your issue before the Taxation and Budget Reform Commission. Now, I'm going to shift specifically to higher ed since that's, you know, our primary concern, that if you have, um, if you like the way that we're, that we're budgeted and funded, I mean, great, and be sure and go and tell them, but we always are in need of more funding to take care of our expanding needs. 
and I ask as a, as a member of the Board of Governors and my fellow, fellow governors to please take a minute and let the Commission know how you feel. Keep in mind that this um, body only meets every 20 years. This is the second time it's met that we established it in our 88, um, I guess in 88 when we voted and became a part of the Constitution. So they're really like trying to project what's best for us for the next 20 years. We all know that our needs are expanding and that we're going to need more. I mean, we're planning now to try to see what we can do to economize, but we know we're going to need more funding. So it is important. I know that um, the chancellor's had an opportunity to address the body, but they're actually going around the state right now. They're going to be in Orlando and um, Tampa next week. I'd ask the president if you would have um, your, your board chairs to go and, and make a pitch and let them know how important it is that they keep higher ed at the top of the list. Um, and I think more is better, you know, not having, I mean, having as many people there to let them know what our message is is very important. Um, the uh, one thing I want us all to keep in mind is that this body has the power to make recommendations of what will go on as possible constitutional amendments for the November 2008 ballot. So it's a very powerful body in that it has the right to go ahead and make recommendations for what we actually uh, will vote on as, a, as citizens of the state in November 2008 doesn't go through any other review. It goes right to the Secretary of State, and it only gets off the ballot if somebody challenges it. So why not get in front of the ball? They're taking public comment through the end of October, and I'm asking all of our universities and our um, trustees and our presidents and members of the, um, of the board to please let's come together and make sure that our voices are heard uh, because it's a very powerful commission. I actually have a, um, the, the actual um, schedule for all the public hearings so I can make this available to you so you can make sure I want to thank um, the board chair at the University of North Florida for being present and making some comments. I'd like to thank your staff for actually working with the chancellor's office and kind of coordinating their comments with his. And also I know your student member was also present. So I, I thank you for doing that. So that's my soapbox. I'm sorry. Thank you, Governor Parker. Chancellor? <clears throat> Just as an addendum to Governor Parker's uh, 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 request we have been working directly with our our government affairs liaisons and we do have a set of talking points out I think there's a an agreement among the universities that we will try to speak from the same general set of concerns as it relates to where we need to be in 20 years because that's the question that the taxation budget reform commission is asking and uh, we are hopeful, we did discuss this yesterday with our legislative liaisons uh, yesterday morning here, and we are hopeful that each of our universities, when the hearing comes to its area, would have a board member there to make the representations of the broader message as it relates to higher ed financing and then any specific me institutional-based messages. But this is an instance where we have to speak as one voice, and speaking as one voice, I feel very confident that we will be heard. Great. Thank you, Chancellor. Anything else come before the committee? Yes, I, I also Shaft. had an opportunity to speak to the group, and the Chancellor and I were together working on this. Great. When they come to Tampa, if you would add, ask your board chair to, to oh, I will. talk again, I'd appreciate it. I definitely will. Thank you. Other business? Is there a motion to uh, adjourn? So moved. <coughs> In the discussion. We stand adjourned. And we will sure. take a very short break until we move into the full board. Five minutes, give or take. Thank you. Nine minutes. I need those five minutes.